so faithful and true. Loving Father, God so faithful and true. We praise you, adore you, we bow. Holy Spirit, what a comfort you are. Holy Spirit, what a comfort you are. You lead us and guide us. You In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. Good morning and a hearty welcome to each one of you. Brothers, sisters, families, and uh, religious sisters, fathers, friends all over all over the world uh, I welcomed I mentioned yesterday I welcomed Germany Europe and now I got emails from New Zealand and Australia saying we're also watching you left us out hearty welcome to all of you it's one big family all over the world God love you God keep you safe God keep you united and we are united in the love of Jesus uh, we are ending a week today and today I'd like to pray and I invite you to pray in this Mass especially. So many people have asked me to pray for different intentions. You understand I can't mention that there are so many names. But today very specially for the people you have asked me to pray for. Particularly the people who have passed away. Passed away. I mean, I, we had a priest passing away at clergy home. I mentioned a brother of a, a priest. Uh, again, another brother of a priest passed away uh, again two days back. There's, there have been so many deaths. For all of them, uh, I want to pray very specially. And during the canon, I'll pause briefly as you mention, as you think in your own hearts and minds about your dear ones. We pray for them. Let's begin this Eucharistic sacrifice, putting ourselves in God's presence, asking His forgiveness for our sins. Lord, we have sinned against you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you come to make all things new. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May you forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, who through the generating power of baptism have been pleased to confer on us heavenly life, grant, we pray, that those you render capable of immortality by justifying them may, by your guidance, attain the fullness of glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please sit. 
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. From Cilicia, Paul went to Derbe and then came on to Lystra. Here there was a disciple called Timothy, whose mother was a Jewess, who had become a believer, but his father was a Greek. The brothers at Lystra and Iconium spoke well of Timothy and Paul, who wanted to have him as a traveling companion, had him circumcised. This was an account of the Jews in the locality where everyone knew his father was a Greek. As they visited one town after another, they passed on the decisions reached by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem with instructions to respect them. So the churches grew strong in the faith as well as growing daily in numbers. They traveled through Phrygia and the Galatian country, having been told by the Holy Spirit not to preach the word in Asia. When they reached the frontier of Mysia, they thought to cross it into Bithynia. But as the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them, they went through Mysia and came down to Troas. One night Paul had a vision. A Macedonian appeared and appealed to him in these words, Come across to Macedonia and help us. Once he had seen this vision, we lost no time in arranging a passage to Macedonia, convinced that God had called us to bring them the good news. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to God's word. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Together, cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Serve him with gladness. Come before him singing for joy. Response. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Know that he is the Lord our God. He made us. We belong to him. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Response. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Indeed, how good is the Lord, eternal his merciful love. He is faithful from age to age. Response, cry out to the joy to the Lord, all the earth. Kindly stand as we prepare to receive Jesus in the gospel. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord who hung for us upon the tree has risen from the tomb. Together, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, if the world hates you, know that it has hated me before we hated you. If you were of this world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted you, they will persecute me. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But all this they will do to you on my account, because they do not know him who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
My sisters and brothers, we continue our journey with St. John, our friend St. John, who has become part of our families also because we meet him so very often, met him every day, listening to his narration of what he heard from Jesus. Remember that he was a close the favorite of Jesus, and they were close disciple of Jesus, and he heard firsthand and reports to us continuously what he heard. But this passage of today where Jesus speaks about the world also hating them, about the possibility of persecution, the possibility of people troubling them, is something which is reported by all the other uh, evangelists also. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, all of them in different words have said the same thing over here. So this must have been something which Jesus said several times, warning them that they would not, should not expect everything to be uh, rosy, everything to be uh, smooth sailing if they were his disciples. If they were his disciples, they've got to be ready also for persecution. We, we read and heard about how the Pharisees were against Jesus, the Sadducees were against Jesus, and the general populace, those in authority, the elders were against Jesus for different reasons, but uh, they did not like his message. In the first reading, we have the uh, adventures of St. Paul in uh, spreading the good news, spreading, uh, evangelizing, spreading the gospel, making disciples of Jesus. That is the call of every apostle, of every Christian, that Paul just felt this passionately. He, and therefore he went incessantly traveling here and there, telling people about Jesus. We've seen the ups and downs. If there's a need of any affirmation of what Jesus said, that you will have persecution if you're my disciple, you see that in the life of Paul. He was beaten, he was stoned, he was left for dead, and uh, he was insulted, uh, cast out of the city, cast into prison. But he, he, as soon as he, he fin gets out of prison, he begins preaching again. So full of the desire. He, in this today's, uh, is a, his, it's his second journey really, Paul's second journey. And first he was always with there was Barnabas and Paul, and Paul and Barnabas. And then now he takes a, a new companion, he takes Silas, remember the one, remember the one who had was sent with that decree from the Council of Jerusalem, so he takes him as a companion. But in today's uh, first reading, we find that he also has another companion, uh, Timothy, whom he finds, and Timothy stays with him right through. We'll find that in many readings. There are also uh, uh, St. Paul's letters to, to Timothy, and then there's also uh, Timothy himself writing. So Timothy becomes a good and close friend of uh, Paul. God always sends helpers for the spread of the news. God always chooses people to spread the good news. That's one thing we see so clearly in the lives of the apostles. People chosen, but they've got to be generous. Wondering, what has God called us for? What has God called you for? What has God called me for? In the spread of his kingdom, in the mission that he has given us on earth. We've come on earth, not by chance, okay, accidentally, you find your way. Uh, in God's, everything is ordered. In God's mind, we have a role to play in the making of the world a better place. The church to make of our country a better place. In the Archdiocese of Bombay, for us to make a better place where God's kingdom ruled. To make really God's kingdom present. Uh, we see uh, also the strategy Everything is very, very systematically done. Uh, sisters and brothers, you find in the scriptures, Jesus stayed within Palestine. He did not go out. The apostles went out of Palestine. But you see in today's uh, reading, they did not go out of Palestine into other areas, if you want to call that uh, of Asia. And he was consistently held. They speak of he had a vision. Did he really dream about it? Did the prophet speak to him about it? Did, did he have a deep inner conviction which was uh, like something which he could not avoid? Was that the meaning of the message? But he was told not to go to certain places until at the end we say go to Macedonia. So even the apostolate is guided by God's hand. 
sending a helper where he should go. Jesus' mission, the Father wanted, only in Israel goes beyond. And now, after, and now it's all over the world. If it was not systematically done, not strategically done, uh, it would not be as effective as it is today, where the church is present in absolutely every uh, corner of the world because of the beginnings over here. But coming back to the first uh, gospel uh, passage where Jesus speaks about the sufferings, I want you also to think that adherence to Jesus does not mean, uh, I was saying, rosy picture. If we follow Jesus and follow him closely, there'll be moments when we've got to suffer for him. And Jesus explicitly says it here, and John has heard it from him, and John tells it to us. Jesus never compromised. Uh, I told you when, when the people uh, were upset about his saying, I'll give you my flesh and my blood, flesh to eat, blood to drink, and, and he didn't say, hold on, uh, I'll explain to you. He let him go. Similarly, whenever he uh, felt that you've got to sell all your gifts and, and give it to the poor, the rich young man, he didn't tell him, come on, come on. I, don't, I didn't mean that fully. Keep something, but just let him go. Discipleship of Jesus, sisters and brothers, means total adherence to him. Means really, if you want to be perfect disciples, the perfect disciple is only Our Lady, as I said before. Uh, we've got to adhere to him and to see what God wants of us. We've got to be ready for also pain. If we love Jesus, pain is part of the responsibility of loving Jesus. We can't follow him fully without any pain. Not possible. Because the cross, the cross is what he redeemed us with and the cross is what we've got to adhere to. Saint Teresa, all the saints suffered a great deal. My, our own Mother Tria, Mother Teresa, Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta, mentions how she had a dark night and she suffered a lot spiritually, interiorly. Saint Teresa of Avila mentions that she suffered a lot and she said she prayed to Jesus. Uh, that's why you have so few friends, because you don't know how to treat your friends. You give them crosses, you give them pain. Sisters and brothers, uh, we must understand when we have suffering, when we have pain, that this is part of the discipleship of Jesus. Jesus continuously reminded his apostles and disciples. And de facto, all but, except for St. John, all the other apostles uh, died a martyr's death. All the martyrs suffered giving witness to Jesus. All the martyrs gave the ultimate witness, ready to give everything up for the sake of Jesus. Even today, in our century, in our times, there are people who suffer for the faith. Even today, there are martyrs for the faith. Even today, there are people carrying the cross with great pain. And so, we are in the season of the resurrection, knowing that the Lord has risen. But we must know also that he went to the resurrection through the cross. And so the cross has got to be also part of our lives if we want to go spiritually. All of us want to do that. Pray to the Lord to strengthen us to bear crosses, to strengthen us to suffer for him, to strengthen us when we have pain because we profess his name. This is part of the discipleship of Jesus. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine which we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to be pleased, receive the sacrifice which we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my sins, cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received but attain the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, he showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember your servants and handmaids, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. I invite you to pray for your dear ones who have departed. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, merit to be quest eternal life, we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, to you, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to our Father in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, safe from all distress, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer you the sign of peace. Christ, peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May the mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us receiving. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, 
in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your divine will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those you have, you, whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let's go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you for joining from all over the world. Uh, it's nice to be united with this invisible virtual link. Uh, may God Keep you safe. God bless you. Exp you experience his love. Uh, as I said, I, today I prayed for many intentions which you offered, especially for those who passed away. And we've had several people whom we know who passed away also very, very recently. My condolences to them. And uh, this evening, once again, we'll, have, we'll come back to the youth. One of, uh, are you, you're so precious to us. We'll have a special talk which is focused on you by our Deacon Ivan, Director of our Youth, and uh, also today Saturday, so we'll pray the Rosary together. It's month of May, and also Saturday we have the Rosary. God bless you, and I was going to say have a nice weekend. Every, every day is a weekend. God bless you. We pray now for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We pray for the doctors doing research that an effective vaccine to combat the sickness is speedily found. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. That the world may believe that the is you